Have you ever decided that you want to do something? You're going to create a program. You're going to create a product, a service. You're going to give a talk or a speech. You're going to do something that is new and uncomfortable for you. And you feel really good about this. And then you're getting ready to execute on it. And the voice starts in your head. The who are you to make this happen? The I'm not good enough. The what do I know about this? Like it shows up in a lot of different ways. If you know what I'm talking about, if you can really relate to this, then you have met my good friend, imposter syndrome. Today on this episode, we're going to dig into what imposter syndrome is, how it shows up, and what the best ways are to move past that to accomplish all the things that you want to accomplish so you can have the life that you want to have and make the impact in the world that you want to make. My name is Amber Furman, and this is the More Than Corporate Podcast. Welcome to the More Than Corporate Podcast. I'm Amber Furman, recovering perfectionist and serial accomplisher. If you're anything like I used to be, You've been living your life thinking that if you accomplish enough stuff, you'll finally find the success you've always wanted. But what if it's not about accomplishing more stuff? What if it's about accomplishing the right stuff? I believe you don't find success. You create it by intentionally designing the life you want and having the courage to get out of your comfort zone to live your design. I went from doing what I was supposed to do to doing what I love to do, and now I get to help others do the same. Keep listening as I chat with inspiring people who make it their mission to live their best life every day and learn how you too can live the life you've always wanted. Really quickly, before we dig into this, I am live streaming this to the Facebook community success center. If you want to be able to see these episodes as they are recorded in real time to give your input, to ask questions, feel free to head to Facebook, request to join success center and come join in on the conversation. So let's talk about imposter syndrome. And I'm going to be completely real with you on where this came from. And it was ugly. So I have this mastermind that I've created and it's gone through three or four revisions. I'm in the middle of the fourth revision now um, in execution, in the middle of offering that and realizing that there are changes that I want to make and and stepping back and readjusting the way that everything kind of flows together. And I'm sitting there getting ready to really put the finishing touches on this next round of this mastermind that I'm going to offer. And just all of the sudden this weekend, these feelings of what the fuck are you doing? Just come over me. Are you really the person that should be talking to people about success? Do you have anything to teach anybody? Will people really pay you for this? Like go back to being a lawyer, stay in your lane, all the things, all the things that, you know, we think of what our worst enemies would say to us. And then we say that to ourselves, right? The things that we say to ourselves, we would never, ever say to other people because it hurts so bad, right? This is what imposter syndrome looks like. And we all respond to it differently. You know, we all respond either by saying, oh, let me learn more things so that I can have the knowledge and information to be able to execute this. And then no matter how much we learn, we still never feel like we have enough information. We um, surround ourselves with people who are doing what we want to do, again, in the name of knowledge, in the name of connection, in the name of increasing our circle. There's so many different things that we do, which are necessary. The learning, the putting yourself in the right circles, all of that is necessary. But the action is also necessary. And no matter how much you learn, no matter how many people you surround yourself with, no matter how many uncomfortable things you do throughout your day and your life, when it comes time to execute this new thing that you're creating, this thing that does not necessarily fall in line with the identity that you've created for yourself in the past, but it does fall in line with the cre- the identity that you're creating for yourself in the future, when it comes to executing this, it doesn't matter how much knowledge you have, how much information you have, how many people you surround yourself with, you will always hit a moment where you say, well, fuck, am I really the right person to do this? If you surrounded yourself with the right people, then there's enough people around you to say, of course you are. Like who else is better than you to talk about 
things that you have experienced in your life. If you've learned the right information, then you have the tools and resources to be able to get yourself to the point where you can call the person who can help you. But so many times what happens, and this was me for a couple of days. Now, granted, I'll be thankful it was a couple of days because a year and a half ago, it would have been a couple of weeks. We sit in our shit, right? We um, seclude ourselves from the people that we know can help us. We sit in that shit storm of feelings, trying to create the reality that's going on in our head, which is that we can't make it happen. Once you step through that, once you realize that those feelings are normal, once you realize that everybody, everyone experiences these, once you realize that pushing through this is going to bring you to such a better place, that pushing through this is, once you're, once you're there and that, that weight comes off of your shoulders and you realize, holy cow, like, this is amazing. This is what I want to be doing. This is where I should be. But you have to have that faith to jump forward. It's really interesting because I was, this, this weekend was rough for me. Um, sometimes, you know, it's interesting. Each year is different. I lost my dad 20 years ago this year. And I keep, like, some Father's Days are really bad. And other Father's Days, I'm just thankful for the time that I had with him. And it always seems like the emotions that I'm feeling as a result of missing him always appear as something else, which I think that we can all relate to, right? We start a fight with somebody over something, and then we realize it's not about the Fruit Loops. It's about whatever's going on over here, right? So this imposter syndrome that I was feeling this weekend was real, and it was also made worse by the fact that the real problem was that I needed to take some time to just sit in the memories of my dad. And I hadn't quite done that enough this weekend. So I was watching a movie. Um, and in this movie, it ended up being about a girl who was extremely religious, um, who had, or spiritual, we'll, we'll use that. I don't know that religion was ever mentioned in it, who had lost both of her parents in a car wreck. And she had to move in with a family that didn't believe in God. And it challenged her, um, it challenged her faith. And there was a quote in this movie that said, um, you can either be bitter that you lost them, or you can be thankful for the time that you had with them. It's going to be your choice. And I really thought when I watched that, man, that's really good advice. And I'm pretty sure that I um, am thankful for the time that I had my dad, right? So I, I try to push through this imposter syndrome that's going on, these emotions. I'm, I'm up and down. My friends know, the friends that are really close to me know that today, that this weekend, Father's Day weekend is hard. And so, um, I make a Facebook post about imposter syndrome to try to pull myself out of this shit storm that I'm in. And at about 5.30, I call my really good friend and I said, hey, I, I just feel like I need to go to church tonight. I've been saying that I wanted to go for the last few weeks and um, I haven't made it. So I just, I really feel like I need to be there. Um, being the good friend that she is, she drops everything and we go to church. And I listened to the pastor talk about what it is to be a good parent. And he starts off by saying, first, you have to define what success means to you in parenting. When you think of what a successful parent is, what, what does that look like to you? What does it feel like? And I'm like, you know, I don't want kids. I don't have kids. But where do I have this conversation with people about defining success? about figuring out what it is that you want, what, what will be a successful outcome to you. So I'm like, already he's speaking my language. And he says, once you have that definition of success, then you can start to move towards that definition of success. And you can pray for the patients to have faith until you get there. And I remember thinking there was a reason that I needed to be here tonight and this was it. That imposter syndrome creeps up on you, man. It creeps up on you and makes you feel like because you have not accomplished all of your goals, that you are a failure. 
At least it does for me. If I'm alone, then this is going to be a really embarrassing podcast, but I don't think I'm alone. So when you have these goals and these things that you want to accomplish and you start to really dedicate yourself to them and then it's not immediate, you're like, well, hell, I'm a failure. And what do we talk about when it comes to failure so often? We talk about the fact that there is no failure. There's only feedback, right? So the moment that you take time to step back, to analyze what went wrong and what went right, and to learn the lessons that you're meant to learn from the behavior and the result, then you get to take that information and you get to do it different the next time. When you stop at that failure moment and you allow that imposter syndrome to win, that, li that little asshole in your head that's telling you that you're not good enough, when you allow that to win, then that is failure, right? So at some point in time, you know, there's this, this person in my head that's telling me, you're not the right person to talk about success. You don't have all of the money that you want to have. You don't have all of the freedom that you want to have. You're still growing. You're still learning. Who are you to talk about success? And then you have to step back and say, well, aren't we all still learning? And aren't we all still growing? And aren't we all still working towards these results? So I'm talking to all of these things were happening on Sunday. And I didn't realize how interconnected they really were. And then I have my coaching call on Monday. And I'm explaining to my coach, like, these are the things that went on and that connection between the Father's Day sermon that I went to at church and the relationship that I was having with imposter syndrome became abundantly clear. Define success for yourself. Put a plan in place to work towards that definition of success. And then work hard and have the knowledge to know that if you work hard and you are patient, you will reach your goal. And even if you don't reach your goal, what, <coughs> excuse me, even if you don't reach your goal, what does Les Brown say? If you aim for the moon, at least you land among the stars, right? So if you have this goal, that's a million dollars a year and you're just getting started in this new business and people tell you that you're crazy. They might be right. You may not hit a million dollars in a year, but what if you hit close to that? What if you hit that like $750,000 mark? It's a hell of a lot better than where you were when you started. And is that a success? Only you can answer that. These are the conversations that we need to be able to step back to have in order to shut down this imposter syndrome. The purpose of me making this episode really was to highlight the fact that that voice in your head that wants you to feel like you are so alone, that wants you to feel like nobody can relate to you, that voice in your head that wants you to feel like you're the only person that doesn't think they're good enough to accomplish what they set out to accomplish, the person is lying to you. If you were to ask anyone who has accomplished a high degree of success in their field, somebody that you look up to and at some point in time want to aspire to be, I promise you that they would tell you that they've had these feelings. I promise you that at some point in time, they would tell you that not only did they feel, but sometimes still do feel like they aren't good enough. The difference is that they don't allow that to stop them and they have the resources, tools, information, and people available to them to help them work through that when they need to. So imposter syndrome shows up in a lot of different ways. It can show up as, like I said, you're not good enough. It can show up as who are you to be the person to do this. Your imposter syndrome may show up in a ton of different ways. Knowing that that's what it is, is extremely important. Knowing that it's real is extremely important. And then being able to really surround yourself with people who have the tools and resources to help you shift. Not necessarily the people who are working towards what you want to have, the people who already have what you want and are working towards bigger and better things. When we surround ourselves with peers, it's so important to surround ourselves with people who have very similar mindsets. The problem with very similar mindsets is that they have very similar problems. When you surround yourself with people who are already doing 
excuse me, who are already doing what it is you want to do. They've already worked through the problems you're having right now. So find that person that has the life that you want to have and connect with them and learn from them because that person is going to be the best one to help you through whatever it is you're going through because I promise they've been there. Again, imposter syndrome likes to try to convince us that we're the only ones that feel that way. And then the best part, and this is something that my coach really verbally slapped me with this week, is that focus on, okay, I made it over this challenge. And then we focus on the challenge, right? And we talk about how great it was for us to make it through this challenge and how awesome we feel because we overcame this obstacle. And then all of our focus gets put on that challenge instead of acknowledging that we made it through the challenge and that's amazing. What's next? What are, what are the steps that we're going to take to move forward and making our energy forward focused instead of backward focused? If any of this is resonating with you, this community, the Success Center community is full of amazing people who are able to connect with you, to talk to you, to help you grow. This podcast has a ton of episodes that will help you work through things that you may be working through. And then you can always reach out to me. Let's have a connection one-on-one. -on -one. Let's talk about what are some of the things that we can do to help you have the life that you want to have. Just remember that that voice in your head, we all have it name it, give it a picture, whatever you need to do. Mine um, is named Fred and looks like a mixture between the Philly fanatic and a gremlin. And, and that's really what I imagine is this little shithead in my head trying to convince me that I don't deserve to have everything that I want to have. And I'm so thankful for the resources that I have, the resources that I can share with you that allow me to push through those moments to know that that person that Fred in my head, I didn't realize that rhymed until now, but Fred in my head is completely full of shit. And whoever your little gremlin is in your head is full of shit too. Always remember that you have the ability to design the life that you have always wanted and you owe it to yourself to surround yourself with the tools, resources, and opportunities that will help you get out of your comfort zone to live that vision. Have a fantastic week, guys. We'll talk next week. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the More Than Corporate Podcast. If anything that was said during this episode resonated with you or provided value in any way, it would mean the world to me if you would head over to iTunes and leave a rating and review for the More Than Corporate Podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time to do that. I'm really looking forward to connecting with you. If you'd also like to connect, I've created a Facebook group that is full of amazing people who also make it their mission to live their best life every single day. If that sounds like something that you're interested in. The name of that Facebook group is Success Center. Head over there, request to join, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.